and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Our op- October horror films continue with the second Japanese horror film I've, re- I've reviewed, and in the, another film from the Criterion Collection, Kuro Neko, from director Kanito Shindo, and I apologize for mangling his name. Right off the bat, I feel I should give this film a trigger warning. There is a rape scene within the first five minutes of the film, following the opening credits. The scene is mostly off-camera, but there are some on-camera elements, and even when it is on camera, uh, off camera, it is audible, which doesn't make it better and arguably makes it worse. Um, consequently, I'm not going to be showing any of those scenes without the censoring or anything else. So, but still, if you're go- planning on checking out this film based on my recommendation, you are warned. The Kuro Neko, or Black Cat of the title, refers to two ghosts, which fits the arc type of, I'm going to mangle this, the Onryo, and also the archetype of the um, the malevolent malevolent cat spirits. Their names are Yone and Shige, who are a mother and daughter who are raped and murdered by samurai. They in turn haunt Kyoto, killing samurai, ripping open their throats, and feeding on their blood. Each of these murders is very creepily done. We only see the first murder from luring the samurai to their ghostly abode, deceiving them with booze and sex, and finally ripping out their throat in its entirety. The rest are shown through montage, with Shindo trusting the audience to recognize that the MO for each killing is effectively the same. These murders ultimately draw the attention of the Emperor and one of his top generals, Minamoto no Raiku. Or Raiko. I'm mangling I'm gonna be mangling lots of names. Raiko, in turn, delegates this to a up-and-coming samurai under his command by the name of Gintoki, who recently got a reputation by hunting down an enemy general. No, 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 not that Ginto- Gintoki, though they may have gotten the name of the character from the film, though the two could not be any more different. Gintoki pursues the ghosts and discovers that the ghosts are actually his wife and mother-in-law. Gintoki, whose real name is Hachi, was conscripted away from their farm and wasn't actually able to get leave to return home until after they were murdered. Gintoki is in turn torn by this, as he still loves his wife, but he also has his duty to his lord. He gets a bit of moral clarity on this after Raikyo basically um, chews out Gintoki after Gintoki learns how his wife and mother-in-law were killed. And he and Gintoki explains this fact to Raiko. Raiko basically tells Gintoki, "If you're not samurai, you're little people." And also contradicts himself, finding it incomprehensible that peasants would have cause to dislike the samurai, while also himself stating that it doesn't matter what they think; if they don't like the samurai, they can be killed without consequence. This is a thing in Shindo's work. From my research on him, particularly with the bonus features on the Criterion disc. Shindo came from a farming family, so generally he sided with the farmers, who historically were treated like crap by the samurai. So it's a kind of a bit how, I'd say, how Western films eventually kind of shifted from siding with the cowboys, or in some cases the cattle baron-owned lawmen, to siding with the farmers, particularly with films adapting and addressing the uh, Jackson County War. Gintoki gets a shock when he learns that Shige had been refraining from killing in order to be with him, and after seven days, her soul was taken to hell. Well, the subtitles localize it as hell. I'm not sure how this works with Shinto, Buddhism, or Taoism. This is actually one of my gaps in my understanding of Japanese, uh, of the popular religions of Japan and Japanese mysticism in general. If anyone has a good English book on Shinto to recommend, Please post in the comments, ideally with a Goodreads link. Yone starts killing again, forcing Gintoki to come after her. He takes her arm, which he presents to Raikyo, after which he must go through a week-long ritual purification. On the seventh day, Yone tries to break in and steal the arm, using tactics ranging from the overtly mystical to... something kind of out of the land shark sketch from Saturday Night Live leading to a final confrontation between the two, which I will not spoil here. This is an incredibly well-done piece of horror cinema. Shindo and his cast take elements from Kabuki and No, along with Western cinematic techniques that all fit together in a wonderful fashion. If you've never seen this film before, and you're okay with a film that has a 
a rape scene, admittedly a narrative important rape scene, but a rape scene in it, I strongly recommend you check it out. It's absolutely worth your time. Um, next time, I have a more mundane work I'll be covering. If you enjoyed this show, please like and subscribe to the, um, the video and the channel, respectively, for notifications for when future episodes come out. Also, feel free to toss a few bucks my way, e um, either on a monthly basis through Patreon, which is linked above, or through my tip jar. Um, if you go through the Patreon route for five bucks, you get your name mentioned in the credits. For at the fifteen dollar level, you will get to decide what I review in the future. I do have the right of refusal on this because I have to be able to get a copy of it. Um, and there's a few places things I'm not covering, but I will um, certainly consider and review stuff that is requested, particularly if you pledge at the $15 level. Additionally, once or twice a week, I do a live stream on Twitch.tv. Please feel free to follow my channel if you're interested in watching me play RPGs or other games. Currently, I'm making my way through Dragon Age 2 as of this recording. Finally, on November 7th, 2015, I am going to be doing a live stream for 24 hours to raise money for Dornbecker Children's Hospital through Extra Life. I had an announcement video earlier. Please check that out. I am going to have a link to where you can donate in the show notes. This whole thing is done through the Children's Miracle Network, which means if your employer does something with Children's Miracle Network, you can get matching dollars, or may be able to get matching dollars. 100% um, of all money donated goes to Dornbecker. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.